Strong good. So you brought the old dog to try his first day in the woods, huh? <laughs> yeah. Skip. Yep. We headed on down, thought we'd have some lunch with you. Good, good. Well, I got a few things to talk about, but I want to eat first. So let's uh, get these guys fed up and eat, and then I'll talk about a few things that I wanted to talk about today. Let's just see how these guys are doing. Hi, Barry. How are you doing? You're not even breathing hard after pulling that big load. Time for lunch? hair day. Get back. Yeah, get out. Get out. Get out. Squishing it, get him out. Back up, back out.
just want your grain, don't you? Okay, lunch is done. Um, I have a lot of work to do on the landing right now. So, we'll go do that. Horses still have a lot of hay here, and they'll pick it at that. And when we're all done and I'm ready to go to the woods, I will see if they want more water. Um, the other day, I was surprised. I'd say, been saying how Baron kind of has stopped fighting now. And he, he has, but... Uh, he was reaching over and trying to steal, trying to steal um, Bill. Bill's grain. So he's he's still a horse. Got my hard hat, and my chainsaw. All right, let me go get the stuff. Okay, so. Let me talk about my landing and a few things. So this is the same job at Paul Smith's College that I've been on um, while I was here last winter and then I'm here again this year. Um, this is actually the third different lot up here that I've been working on. And I have, down this road, I have another landing where I started. And now it's just a turnaround spot and then I'm coming back here and this is where the landing will be for the rest of this job. I have trees up through there, and I got trees back through there. Anyways, um, one thing I wanted to, I guess what I'm trying to do as I make these videos, I, I think I've said this before, is promote horse logging and, and promote the use of draft horses in work, not just in the woods, but on the farm. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm showing what I'm doing both in the woods and on the farm. Um, so I guess I'm going to try to highlight some of the, the good things about horse logging. Um, and I'm not really trying to get people, well, I guess I am uh, trying to get more, I guess I am trying to get more people to actually come into the horse logging business, but uh, I'm not demoting, I guess that's the right word, is that the right word? Um, skidders and tractors, you know, there's still people that are more prone and prefer using the tractor than horses, obviously. I personally like to use the horses, so that's why I do this. But I would, I am trying to promote the horses. And uh, so here we have a landing, and it's a different landing than I had. 
And my trucker the other day was saying, well, you're not gonna have enough room for a landing there. And I said, well, you have plenty of room to get by and get turned around, come back and put my logs up, don't you? He said, well, yeah, sure I do, but you just don't have much room for landing. And that's one big thing about horse logging, especially if you have a skid steer, it takes very little, a very small landing to operate perfectly fine. So I've got logs up there and I've got logs here. These are all 14s and 16s on this side of the road. And over here, I'll put the 8s, 10s, and 12s. Um, we have very few 8s, 10s, and 12s. It's mostly all 16s, mostly all 16s actually. At the mill we're sending it to, they said they would rather have a crooked 12 than a straight 8 because the 8s just don't work good on their debarker. So that's why we're, we're trying to um, please them as much as possible. Um, so it's, it, it's a tiny landing, but it's not that hard for me to work this landing. I, at times, will plug the landing up faster than other times because I might have bigger logs. But today, I've been cutting some tiny little logs. And so, you know, I've got several hitches here. I was late getting here this morning. So this is all I did this morning. Um, we actually had, we sold our last steer for the year. Uh, and so he is gone. And so we had to load him up this morning. So I was late getting here, but that's okay. I, I, would need, I knew I had some small stuff this morning to get done. And now I'm gonna continue further back in the trail to get into hopefully some better material. I had talked about on another video, the importance of having a lot that works good for you. You've got to have enough of quality wood to make a decent living if you're going to be in the horse logging business. And if I had too many trees like this small, it'd be a little bit harder to make a living. Now, if they were all in one area and you're cutting a whole bunch of them at, at a time, it's not so bad. But if they're scattered one here, one there, all over the place, it does make it quite difficult. Um, I, I did want to say even at this point that there's that I am not the only horse logger out there. And there's other horse loggers that do the same thing I do and they might even be doing it way better than I do. Um, I, I know even on YouTube, it seems like there's starting to be more and more people showing what they're doing in horse logging. And so I kind of want to promote a friend of mine. I say friend, I've never even met him, but I had a conversation on the, on the phone the other night and uh, I, I think, and he's been putting on some videos. And so I kind of want to promote his channel. It is Brant Answorth, And I'm not even sure if I said that perfectly right, but maybe we'll try to write it on the screen to, if we have it wrong. So you can go check out his channel. There's been a couple other horse loggers and mule loggers I've promoted a little bit. And I just think it's great that more people are starting to do this um, and show it even what they do on YouTube. So check them out. So we'll get the skid steer started up, my logs cut up and scaled up, and then we'll get the horses hitched back up and we'll head up to the woods. We haven't done a video on horse logging for a little while now because I was, I don't know, I just did a bunch on the farm and probably even by the time this particular video comes out, it's gonna be days from, from today. It won't be very recent, but that's okay. One thing I'd like to talk, say about this job and the markets I have, they are really frown on red rot, which I don't blame them one bit, I would too. We do have some red rot in some of these trees, but so they'll be deducting that, of course. Also, they want to make sure we keep the small end at nine inches. So, you know, we've got to, make sure that the small ends on all these logs are at least nine inches in diameter. It's frustrating. This has been kind of a frustrating morning because there's such small trees and it's hard to get a decent size hitch. Um, even though Baron is a young colt and I'm using, that's who I'm using today, 
he's starting to pull pretty good. So I really prefer having bigger hitches than I've taken out this morning. And production has slowed down quite a bit because of it. It's also very frustrating when I do a poor job and I try to score where my marks are because I've already marked these up in the woods so there's no less trash on the landing because there's, there's nothing to be cut off most of the time. But uh, I don't know, I kind of messed up. I, on this particular log, I did a poor job because I can't see my mark, so I don't know where to cut it. And by the looks of the length of this, there's probably three logs too. So I'm going to have to remeasure it to find out where they're at. That. Oh, it's 33, so it must be 216s. Okay. There it is right there, but no mark. Jim's hooking everybody back up after lunch and today Baron is on the nice side and Bill is on the off side which I believe is the way they usually work. <laughs> Good job. It was great to hear everybody's um, comments on the off and the nigh on the on that video and um, it's interesting to find out that in many different um, disciplines or whatever, um, it's kind of the same idea. It helps solidify it in my mind anyways. So thanks for all your comments, everybody. So we're just walking up our woods road trail right here. And now we're gonna turn into the woods. Feel that. Cheek, 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 calf, cheek. Take a walk. <sighs> so 
So I had all those small ones kind of off to my left here. And this is where I'm gonna make my trail to continue on. I cut that stump down lower so I can straddle right over it. And so here's one little log right here. We'll just roll out of the trail and all this stuff will have to be cleaned up. And then off to our right is a tree I cut just before lunch. And let me explain a few things even about that. So this tree here was, as you can see, a double tree, meaning two trees kind of grew together. And uh, because of that, I probably will end up cutting it off up here to get rid of that split so that it's more of a round log here and then it'll continue back up through there. Um, but what I wanted to explain a couple things on, and I was kind of wish Brenda was here when I did it because, so I cut this tree and I had a nice opening right up here, up the hill, which is perfect. And the fact also that these tr the tree would be lined up to my trail and so I can take it out a lot easier. This trail is a bit of a crooked trail, so I don't want to take anything more than a 33 foot piece because as I come out into the road, it's kind of a sharp turn. If I try to take a longer log, like a whole tree at a time, I would probably get bound up and I'd get into trouble. Anyways, this tree was leaning pretty heavily that way. So I was able to cut it and everything was a good cut as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's fairly flat cut here. Um, nice notch in it. Um, I had good, Skip, you're not helping matters. Come on, Skip. So I ended up with, with two, um, my, my hinge here was cut. I was afraid as I was, I just had, so I just had one wedge with me. I always just stay and keep one wedge. There's about, I think probably two weeks ago, I had another tree that I couldn't get down with just one wedge. So I had to go back to my truck and get my two wedges, two other wedges. And that's what I had to do today. I used this one wedge. I wasn't able to push this tree over. I couldn't pound the wedge in. I was concerned that maybe I hadn't got everything cut here and there was a piece, a big slab down the center that wasn't cut. Or I didn't have a, uh, the notch, I mean, the, the hinge wasn't cut enough. Well, so I couldn't get it to go over. So I had another hitch ready to go. So I took that down and came back up and brought my other two wedges up. I was able to, this one was started here and it didn't get very far. I couldn't pound it any farther. And I took these two wedges and put them right here side by side. And by tapping one at a time, I was able to push this right in and the tree went right over. As it turned out, as I get this tree down and look at it, 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 everything went fine, but I really had hardly any hinge left here. I had a corner hinge and a corner hinge there, but not a lot of, of hinge there. And so I was fortunate that that didn't snap right off and go the other way. But um, it's amazing what you can do with wedges, but I still am not gonna carry all three wedges with me for something that might happen or happens maybe every two or three weeks. Now, sometimes it still could happen today, but chances are, I'm not gonna use three head wedges very often when I'm cutting down trees. One will suffice, and I just don't wanna to have to carry them and keep track of three wedges. So Are I just, they heavy? Well, no, they're just plastic wedges. So it's just that you so, don't have good room in your pockets or yeah, what? Yes. Some people will bring a, a knapsack with all kinds of stuff with them, and, and that's a good idea if you're staying right here in one spot cutting. Anyhow, I'm gonna cut, I think I'm gonna cut, Three feet, two, three feet off those the butt of these two trees, and then I'll mark it up, and then I will get situated to get out of here. Um, we actually have another partial tree down there, so I'll probably actually get that first. So, um, yeah, who knows what I'm gonna do? Let's get get to work.
Okay, so my big tree's all ready to go. I've got one little, uh, well, one portion of tree down there. And then I have this log right here we gotta get. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. Um, in the process, we're, we're making a trail also as we continue up this hill. One thing about logging that is horse logging, especially you've got so much brush that you have to handle. And so if you're not careful, you'll get your hands wet really fast. So it's important to try to keep your hands dry to stay warm. And when you're handling chains and brush all day, it's really hard to do. So, you know, it's just, I try to be cautious about that. When I'm grabbing a piece of wood, I try not to get my hands in the snow if at all possible. Okay. I'll leave that right there for now. I'm gonna come up into here and back down into there. Okay. Come here, Skip, what's your problem? Careful. Oh, Have you? Huh? Huh? Bah. Bah. Oh. I step by. And G. 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 Oop. Bah. Huh? Huh? Bah. Huh? Oh. No. Okay, so I backed up in here. I got this tree here. I don't know what it is, uh, 16 and 212s maybe, I think, or something like that. But as you can see, I got a little balsam um, tree underneath this tree, so I can't get a chain on it. So instead of dubbing around with it, I just threw my logging tongs on and I grabbed it and I should be get out of here. Now here's a, a nice, nice piece of wood. As you look back to down there, down through there, look at that, how nice and straight that is. But it's not big enough in diameter to be able to sell to the, to the markets I have. If I was at home and this was my job, that piece would be coming back to my place to put in through my sawmill. Those small little logs like that make beautiful two by fours. So anyways, let's see if we can get, get this out of here. My cap is done. Oh. Step a bit. Cap step. Careful. 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 G. 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 Oop. Hi. 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 G. 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 Bell. Oop. Step up. Step up. G. 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 How about? How about? Happy. Bye. 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 Huh? Bye. Happy. Huh? Bye. 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 Oh. 
No. No. Over. Never. Never. Let's step a little bit. Careful. Oh. Just a little bit. A little bit. Oh. Ha. 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 I really like the logging tongs, but they tend to come unhitched sometimes. So I only use them to get out of situations like I had right there where I couldn't get a chain on. I shouldn't say only. Once in a while, I'll use them to go all the way down the landing, but I need to, it's just very easy to lose the, the piece that you have that you're hitched to with logging tongs. So uh, I chose to put the chain on. And also this, tree if I remember right there may be a 16 or a 14 and then two 12s so it's a little bit longer than I like to have so there's a slight chance because of that I might have trouble getting out of here and getting bound up between trees but I'm gonna go carefully and see if we can do it wait for me I need to get out of yes, here yes you do I'm come gonna... right up there okay don't move <laughs> this tree right here is that <laughs> attached yeah okay you're fine right there and cap step cap careful 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 ah ah oh oh no no okay so you can see I got caught up there. Actually, I got caught on that stump right there. And right here, don't get too close, Brenda. But you can see this stump and that tree, it bound up. Um, I could, I am going to cut that stump down lower so it will swing around there. I gotta be careful because there's a little bit of pressure on it, so it's gonna try to push this way. Um, but that's not gonna solve the problem because I'm still gonna come over there and it's still gonna hit there. This is where my last log is. So if I could get, cut this down and go just a little ways further, so I'm on the trail, next to the trail with this last log, I'll cut this log off and leave it right there. So then one of my other hitches as I come down the hill, I'll be able to grab this little log and take out with me. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. bit right there that you just cut off is going to make the difference yes but it's still not going to get around that corner because it's still going to hit that one stump there so i'm not i'm just going to go a little ways and stop i have a little bit ha 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 Cast out. Ho! Oh. No. So now I can cut that last log off, leave it right there. It's right next to the trail. So one of my other hitches as I'm coming down, there's quite a lot more trees up through there. So this, there's a, uh, I can grab this other log at any point.
I also grabbed that tiny little balsam right there and it's kind of bound. And if I don't cut that off, it's gonna come right down on the cart when I drive ahead. So I'll snip them that off, off also. What, what little balsam? That's right in the chain. Between oh. the, see it? You can come down a little bit. Can I come down on the you other You go side? over that over there. You'll be okay. safe. I get, can I climb off this? <clears throat> So you can see oh, there this is. balsam right here get caught there. So I'll just snip that off and then we'll swing over there and come out of here, no problem. Um, all of these balsam trees, and I am not a lover of balsams. Um, they have their uses, I suppose, but I just to me, it's just a junk wood. And I actually talked to my my uh, trucker and I was talking to him about balsam because he said he was cutting balsam. I says, how can you cut balsam? Every balsam I've cut in here was rotten. You know, there's just no good. He says, and, and I agree with him because uh, I'm having issues at home with this also. But he said, if it's a solid stand of balsam, they're good. But if balsam grows with hardwoods and or with pine, they just grow till they're, you know, this big and that's as big as they get and they'll be all dead. And most of these small ones are all dead even right now. You'll see, uh, possibly when I cut this, that you'll see the center of it's no good. Let me just see. Now it's not dead yet, but so many of them, even this size, have already got a dead heart to them. Anyways, we should be fine. I'll swing that out of there and run down with this small hitch. It seems like so often today, I have to take small hitches because that's all I can get hold of. Years ago, I used to have a third horse and I'd use him to bunch it together so I could have a lot bigger hitch. But, uh, I'm just not gonna worry about today. I'll just take what I can. When I'm dealing with Baron being young horse, it's just as well anyways. G over here. G, 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 G careful. G, G, oh. Cast up. Oh. Huh? Ba, 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 oh. That's something I've never seen before. That would happen to people all the time, but I've never seen it. How this before your getting before your cart. This is what you call them, getting the, the cart before the horse. The log before the cart. So yeah, I gotta release that so I can get that positioned or I'm gonna be end up hitting this tree here. Does that happen to you very often? No. Nah. Shouldn't be a problem even today. Hey, step by. Careful, careful. Oh. Caps up. Caps up. Cheek. Oh. Oh. Careful, Skippy. Cast up. Careful. Ah. 
have it. My bad. Oh. Yep. Sometimes I will stop every single hitch and cut it up and start the skid steer up and pile it up. But most of the time, especially in the winter time when there's snow on the ground, I like to just go, I like to have my lane in such that I can actually get pretty near half a day's worth of wood right here. And if I had a really good day, that would not happen here because this lane is small. So I'd have to do it more than just, you know, in a half a day, I'd be plugged up or well, less than a half a day. But the way things are going today, I'm sure I'll be fine, unfortunately. Um, now today, I'm not sure what we'll get for footage out, but it's not looking like a very productive day. And those days happen sometimes, being a slow, slow start and all. But uh, I must say, I have been very happy with the production, even of uh, these two, um, with, with Baron being a young horse, just a four-year-old. Um, even yesterday, I think I got out 3,300 feet. So he's been doing really well. Um, there's days when you're dealing with all this small stuff, it just production really stinks but um that's just the way it is sometimes i know i've got some better wood in other spots so it should be should be a make up for it there so let's go get that other tree how many times do you get snow down your back a ton seems like all the time up here so what i have here is a big log, I cut a 16 foot log, and then this small log has a 33 footer. So I will hitch onto the two of them and take them down through here. And uh, then I'll come back and you can see where it's cut right there on that 16 foot log, the big butt log. So the rest of that piece will come out of here. But I can see that I have a balsam right there that I think I'm going to cut and get that out of the way also just so I know I won't get bound up. Um, that would be the best, safest bet. Then I got a few, a little bit more brush to move and then I hope to come into that hole right there and back right up into here. <laughs> You have to really think when you're cleaning brush off a trail. 
and have a pretty good idea where you probably will be heading so you never have to handle it twice. You don't want to throw brush and then realize later you've thrown it right into the same spot you need to be going. Yeah, or just hitch onto the tree and just go and knock it all down. I shouldn't say that like it's that, like they do a terrible job because some guys with skitter do a very good job, but you do tend to knock more trees down. But most of those trees really should have come down anyways. Like all this balsam here. If every one of these balsams were gone, it'd be great. But that's not going to happen in my time. <laughs> I, I am not a lover of balsam, let's put it that way. Just for Christmas trees, okay. So I think I'm set and ready to back in there. At least I hope. Although I don't like this. Careful, ha, ha, ha. Careful. Ha, oh. Ha. Ba. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Ba, ha, ha, ha. Ha. Ho. Ha. Ho. Ho. No. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like these carts because they're hard to get around with. And there is some, definitely some truth to that. And uh, so they say they'd rather just have a team and an evener so they can just come in there and spin around just a tiny little spot. And there's some truth to that. But there's a lot of work to just, and a lot more dangers and just using a loose evener in the woods, in my opinion. Um, I've done it that way before, I don't like it. Most of the time, it's amazing how small of an area you can get turned around, even with a cart. Ha, 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 Bye. Hi. Happy. Bye. G little bit. G. 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 Bye. Bye. Hi. G. 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 Oh. G. G bell. G. 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 Oh. Bye. Bye. Hi. Oh. Hey. Hey. Huh? Huh? Oh. Oh. Then you want to slide that chain underneath that log. Best you can. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so this is how you figure out where it's You'll find right there. Right there's a perfect spot. Okay. This is gonna hold them. How will they go that way? It skipped you off the log. Yep. He's got a lot to learn about the woods.
Trevlig bättre. Hej! 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 Släpp lite bättre. Hej! Kassa! Oh, oh! As you can see, as I was coming down through there, I kept stopping because I was hoping to be able to get a better hitch pitched onto this better, meaning I wanted that hitch in the center here, not off to the side like that. But we have so many things that's deflecting, def deflecting us away, so it's not happening yet. We're hitting that stump. We got those stumps up there, and all this, all the trash which is exactly what happens in the woods. You have all this trash that you have to deal with. So I'll go a little ways farther. Hopefully it'll slide into the center. I can back up and get a, the hitch closer to where I want it to be. This is a nice hitch. I'm happy with this hitch for, for especially with Baron. I test up. Oh, huh? Oh, so this is what I like. This is just the way I like it. I'm going to have to just get a little bit closer, a little bit tighter, and although not much. Um, there's a lot of different carts out there um, that people use. And this particular cart has an axle on it. So the height of the axle is probably, I don't know, probably, it's 12, probably 16 inches off the ground. Well, because that axle is 16 inches off the ground, the log is not going to, be able to go underneath it most of the time, especially on a big log. So all you have for lift ability is the fact that the hitch is up higher than the log. If it's not, then you have to put a cradle hitch. We've talked about that before. But if it's such that I have a little bit of lift, that's all it takes. All I need to do is get these logs just an inch or two off the ground and I'm good to go. There's a lot of different carts out there. For example, um, Brant's car that I spoke about earlier in the video, um, he's got a YouTube channel he's starting up. His car is totally different than this. It is higher up so the logs can actually go through there so he can have more lift. So he'll try hard to get on a stumps or something to lift the log up and then he'll get a closer hitch so that he has the log in the air, sometimes six, eight, six or eight inches off the ground. Um, that is not how this car is designed and I'd hardly ever do that and I don't even like to do that when I'm going down the trail and I have these really loose I generally don't tighten them up tight tight because for one they tend to be really hard to unhitch when I get to landing although I do have a, a drawbar that I can release but for two there's something about the way it takes the tongue of the cart and just thrashes it so bad. So I feel it's actually better to not worry about getting it too tight because if you have a smaller log than this height, it will always lift it enough to generally get you out of trouble. And it just, there's no doubt it pulls probably harder than some of those um, types of carts. But um, this has worked great for me for years. And I, as you've seen, I do pull some pretty good sized loads behind this cart, so it does work well. But anyways, if you were to go check Brant's channel out or some of these other channels, you'll get a better idea of the different options out there for logging with horses, with the carts especially. So I actually have to go do a little walk. So Brandon, I'll we'll go see where we're gonna be heading to. Let me just pull ahead just a little way so I can tie Baron. He's getting really good. But just to be safe, it's always best to be safe. Careful, sir. Oh. Oh. So I'm just going to take my lines off. I have seen videos lately on the internet that I'm not really happy with with people with horses that take too big a rich risks you know it's just especially new people starting out that have not worked that much have not had their first runaway to know how terrible it feels when you have a horse run away it is so important to tie your horses whether it's by the halter whether it's by the bit 
or whether it's by with alliance. Every one of those ways to tie a horse, there's issues about it. Probably not the halter, but all the other ways, there's issues about how to do it. And there's good ways and bad ways about it all. And chances of things happening by doing it that way. By tying your lines like this, this works great when you have a big hitch behind you. There's no way those horses can back up because they're going to be running to the hitch. They can't go ahead because they're tied to the lines. If they were just sitting here, and this has happened to me quite a few times, I guess I'm a slow learner. So if they're sitting here with just the cart and nothing there to, to back, to stop them from backing up or small hitches that would go underneath the axle so they can actually back up. I have had quite a few times where they've backed up and they just kept backing up and backing up and backing up and get into a lot of troubles with, because they were tied by the lines. So you have to do it right when you do it. And these people that do it wrong, it's going to happen to them eventually. Things are going to go bad. Hopefully it won't be so bad that they can't learn from it and they won't have any injuries. But these guys also that take too much trust in their horses and think, oh, I've got safe horses. They'll stand for me. There's not a horse out there that won't run away. Trust me, I'm telling you, there's not. And at your early stages in using horses, you have do not take those chances. It's just not worth the risks. You can ask Brenda about runaways. I've had my share of them. He has, and I don't ever want him to have another one. I, I guess as you get older, the, you think about those things probably more than when you do when you're younger. Probably because my body is easier to break than it used to be. All right, so let's go for a walk here, Brenda. I want to figure out for sure where I want my new trail to continue through. This is a log job. I decided to kind of cut my way in. A lot of times I go right to the back of the job and, and just take the time and put the trail all the way in and then work my way out. I decided to do it this way. This time, just kind of work my way in. So at this point here, I'm going to either go up through here or over to my right somewhere but I just need to go ahead to see where my final destination is going to be before I make the trail. I was hoping to find my tracks from yes the other day maybe over here yeah this is where I was so I walked out here yesterday to get a better feel as to what and where I'm going to be. And I found something out I didn't know. This job here comes to the top of the hill and I'm seeing a bunch of trees down at the bottom of this hill, which means I got to pull all this stuff up this hill and then back down the other hill. It's kind of a big knoll here that I'm going to have to deal with. But it's a pretty good hill right here. You can go around it. There goes a the deer. I've been seeing a lot of deer up here. Um, I, I could, but I don't think that's the most practical thing to do either. When there's so much snow, and a lot of the snow is actually off the, the branches, but when there's a lot of snow, it is very difficult to see where the marks are on the trees, to find trees. It seems like I spend as much time walking around trying to find the trees to cut. There's one over there and yeah. there's a deer over there. I, find, I spend as much time trying to find where to cut as I do actually logging. So this is where I came in from the other day. I remember it now. So over here we have a few trees, but we also have a big hill over here, which goes down to somewhat civilization. It's 
tell you the truth, I'm not even sure what this is. I'm assuming it's, it's the okay. town garage type That's of thing. But uh, yeah, there's a snowplow over there probably that says it. Anyhow, we have plenty of work left here to do. Let's, uh, let's take a walk a little bit down here because maybe there is a way to go around that hill. Um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It does seem like it's just a... I know, actually, in a lot of ways I wouldn't mind going up with that hill because Baron could really use the work. But it does almost seem like it's a bit of a knoll that we could go around. There's quite a few trees in here. See, there's the top of my tree right there. See that tree? See that top? That's the big tree I just cut. Oh. So that yeah, being the I'm case, like I don't around. need to go up over that hill. You're coming down this way? I can easily come down this hill. Come around, just go around it. Well, that's good. So that's good. We found a way to go, to go around that hill. Um, and that should work out fine for us. There'll be a lot more work in making a trail, but it really doesn't matter. It's, there's a lot of other trees as we get up to it. So I may do the same thing as I did now start out the road and kind of work my way up through off to the uh, right anyways i'll take this down and then i'll come back for that last one and uh yeah let's go yeah Oh, that cap is down. Cap is. Oh. I don't know what to do now. I say I don't think I've ever had this happen before. Everything you can't like unhitch anything, huh? 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 I have to quit my chainsaw. I could just take the pressure off and drop right off there, you know? But I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's probably partially because it's flat there. Just like that one's a little bit flat and it got that tire and as it's sliding down that hill. Well, I'm not gonna double it. I'm gonna get my saw, cut two feet off of it. Stinks, but. Not a very productive day. 
I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm not saying that was the first time that's ever happened, but I can't recall it happening. Fortunately, it wasn't a piece of veneer hardwood. Just a Just pine, simple enough to make it a 14 instead of a 16. No big deal. Cuff step. Oh. Well, I guess that's going to do it for this video. It's not going to be a very productive day for me, but those days happen. But uh, it's been a good day so far anyways. So you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Brenda's got to head for home and take Skippy home with him. Her. Yes, you go home with the boss, don't you? The boss going to take you home. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks for coming along. Bye, love you.